Hello, welcome to another edition of your program, program on Leadership Television, Morning Radio. Morning Radio, today we are looking at the economy, analyzing Forbes' top 20 African billionaires in 2024. Of course, with me in the studio to discuss that is the CEO, Drawbridge Communication, a marketing communication, PR, and crisis management consultancy, Hassan Abdul. Hassan? Thank you very much. Of course, my name is Winifred Weber, your host on the program. Now, Forbes, since uh, Monday this week, came out with his 2024 top 20 African billionaires. And of course, congratulations to our Nigeria's own Aliko Dangote, who made the list, and who is essentially is also Africa's richest. And of course, we also had, have another uh, Nigeria's uh, billionaire, Femi Otedola, on the list. Now, Hazan. My question is, we've been hearing and seeing Forbes list for many years. Is Forbes an individual and an organization? How come they or he have the list of billionaires in every country or continent? Okay, all right. So thank you, uh, Winifred. Mm -hmm. Yes, so um, Forbes, how do I put it? Forbes mm -hmm. was an individual. Okay. The magazine itself was started by an individual mm -hmm. and his name was Forbes and he had a partner. But of course, over time, um, he passed on, his children took on the company and they continued. And I think now they are part of a, I think a Hong Kong or a China based um, mm -hmm. publishing their group. So that's, that's, the, that's the origin. Okay. So Forbes itself is, uh, is a publication mm -hmm. and the origin starts from a name, which is mm -hmm. the owner's name, which he transferred to the publication. But as it is today, he of course he has been late for a while. I think he died in the 50s and his children took over. And then I think the children too have some um, passed yeah, on. some have passed on, and I think eventually when they sold the company, they sold it for about twenty million dollars or so, way below what people expected it to be what. So, but how do they have uh, the list of uh, what okay. billionaires? So, yeah, good. So it's it's not magic. Mm. It's not magic. So they have partnerships spread across the world that tap into all of the world's financial markets and stock exchanges. Mm. So what you see as the list that they present mm. is what the i would extract from the stock exchange of the of the of different countries. countries yes okay. so is the value the share values of these particular individuals in real time because even though they give you the snapshot at the end of the year mm. if you go they have the daily updates okay that's why if you if you, re, if you realize last about two weeks ago mm. they said dangote had been toppled oh yes by of south course, africa many nigerians were shocked yes. at the news good we and then, uh, yes mm. and then about a few days later mm. we had it was now back on top yeah. so there's there's the daily list that comes out and that daily list mm. is updated as stock markets open across the world on a daily basis so mm. once the stock markets open their date they get their data if they feed their data into the algorithm and it's no shows whether you are going up or down so it's um so but they have partnerships that spread across all the stock markets in the world okay. and sorry and also to add it also computes based on exchange rate fluctuations okay. so because especially if you are trading in a country mm. and your all your wealth is maintained in that country mm. because they have to still exchange it back into dollars so there's a uniform rate a uniform currency for computation so, which is what affected um, Aliko Dangote a couple of weeks back. Mm -hmm. So, as the Naira was sliding against the dollar, it was affecting what his total wealth was in dollar. So, it's not that he lost money, money. in Nigeria, mm -hmm. but when you convert that into dollar, mm -hmm. at the global level, of course, he had slid down a bit and, and South African had come and okay. overtaken him. Yeah. Now, Forbes list always comprises uh, sports, people in business, sports, and entertainment. Now, do you really believe that these are the richest people because an organization in the USA so? Well, that also is a bit tricky. So mm. when they compute this list, the list mm. they have they have different lists. 
So the list that um, they use for calculating billionaires, for mm. instance, uh, for those who they have access to, is different from maybe when they are trying to compl um, compute the list for celebrities or influential people. So mm. they have indices for measuring how people fall in each of these lists. But whether these people are the richest is uh, maybe another, another matter entirely because you have to have wealth that is within their own probably of what they can measure. Okay. Yes, you know, because I actually have a follow-up to that. You and I know has on that uh, there are politicians and presidents that are even richer than some of some countries. Talking about the Nigeria and some African countries as such people on the list. These are people yeah. that are not on the list. So it's just is it just the same people like Warren Buffett, Big Gates, Elon Musk, Mark Zuckerberg, Dan Gotha and Tedela, etc. Yes, so Winifred, of course, mm. many of those people will not be on that list. <laughs> many of those people will not even come and confidently tell you how much they have mm. because many of them cannot justify the source of that wealth. Okay. Okay. So what is being measured, like I mentioned, is for most of them that for these that measures wealth mm. is the value of the shares that they have trading in stock exchanges. So this is not necessarily money they have in their pockets. Okay. It's not okay. even necessarily money that is even in the bank. Yes. Okay. So, but this is the value. So as their shares and, and as stock prices go up and down, it also affects the total volume of what it is that they say they own. So these politicians, of course, you won't find them anywhere near stock exchange. You have to have something you're trading and you have to be a publicly quoted company for you to even be on the stock exchange. You can't go and steal your country's mm -hmm. money and then come and say you want uh, to be um, rated by, by Forbes. It mm -hmm. basically tracks legitimate uh, income. Okay. Yes. Now, that question that is also running in the minds of Nigerians, including yours sincerely, is the fact that uh, many people are wondering when Forbes say the person, somebody so so and so is worth at least maybe hundred million dollars. Does that mean that that is the total value of the amount they have in their bank? No, no. So just like I said, it's it's of course it's not what they have in their bank. Um, for many of them, you'll mm. be surprised. Day you go and you ask them, but they, oh, they say you're the richest man in Nigeria. They mm. say you have X. He can't pull out money from any bank account. However, so, on the humor side, because uh, when uh, Forbes released the list, and many Nigerians were wondering what happened to our own uh, Tony Ilumelo, and of course somebody Koskali said that no, it's not people's bank's money that he has that we get money list. So how is it actually done? Okay, so um, sometimes it's Tony Ilumelo can be on the list if the list decides to go that far. far you know, right. I think the list basically tries to track four hundred. Okay. of the richest people in the world mm. so i'm sure maybe you will still have a maybe a tony Lumelu if the list maybe goes further down mm. that's why if you check i think in the list today i'm not sure you have more than uh, maybe 15 or 20 africans in that top 400 mm. i don't even think that they're, they're up to that mm. so you have mm. you have um, nigeria you have um, dangote you have um, samadrabiu you have mm. a family yeah, yeah. yeah so maybe then you have um, um, a so mm. and this these are these are just the billionaires so um you may have maybe a few hundred million of dollars, but you have not yet crossed the threshold okay, that four hundred. Okay. So he's somewhere, but maybe not just he's not there yet. Okay. Now Aliko Dangote has consistently been the richest man in Africa for over a decade now. Kudos to Nigeria and to him too. Now one may begin to wonder what impact has that made on the economy of Nigeria? Okay, so I think that question um that question can be looked at from two directions. Mm. What impact has Aliko's world had on Nigeria? Yeah. Then maybe also look at what impact has a Nigerian economy had on Aliko mm. to have made him this world. Okay. Yeah. okay. So, but first of all, let's take mm. the first part. Um, for him to, you know, have the kind of money he has, mm. he has businesses, he has an industry, he has industries, he has enterprises running mm. which create this wealth, which yes. creates this value. Mm. And these things don't run themselves. You have hundreds and hundreds of Nigerians being employed by yes. these um, okay. these companies. So he's responsible for the, uh, the, the, the earnings of thousands of Nigerians, which puts food on the table of thousands of families. You have um, the products from his companies, you know, being in our houses, a lot in almost every house you go, you will you see something there. You see Dangote salt or Dangote sugar, or the, the house itself was built to Dangote cement. Mm. All of these go into the gross product of Nigeria as a country. Okay. So, when they say Nigeria has a maybe a trillion dollar economy, we're talking about the, the, the total production mm -hmm. output. 
and the output from the Angotes industries contributes significantly to that. So there are a lot of ways that um, he has influenced through the businesses that he has set up, the economies of people and of the country as a whole. But you also have to come back again. If Nigerians also, if Nigeria's economy wasn't as favorable, also maybe he wouldn't also have grown. So it's, it's. I think it's a relationship that um, that rubs up on each other. But certainly he has had a lot of impact. He has a refinery that has just come upstream. Oh, I was also going to ask that now yeah. that a refinery has come upstream. So how are you going to? How are you assessing it? Maybe in the next few years to come. The refinery itself, or no, him, the refinery okay. himself, and also his uh, wealth. Well, I can assure you his wealth will continue to grow because um, it's it's actually a sector he has gone into that has a huge demand. Mm -hmm. We have a very huge deficit which mm -hmm. we which we presently meet by importation. Mm -hmm. So he has keyed into an area of demand, a demand that is not going to dwindle anytime mm -hmm. soon. So you can be sure that in the next maybe 5, 10, 15 years, what we are counting today as, his, um, as what his earnings are will significantly double. And he has mm -hmm. made that as... Um, something that he's known for. He keys into sectors where people, where there's a constant demand. Mm. Yes, or they have a housing deficit, is constantly into yes, cement. Yes, yes. We need food to eat, so you have dangote, you have into food, you have into sugar, he's into, he's into fertilizer. Mm. So he keys into se sectors that have high demand and where the amount of capital he brings in mm. sets him apart from the rest. Okay. Thank you so much. Now, looking at glo current global trends, do you think there could be more African companies making it into Forbes rankings in the near future? I am an African. I love Africa. And I keep praying that mm -hmm. Africans, if it, in fact, if it take up the whole of the, maybe the top 10. Africans will get there. African companies will get there. But there's a lot of work that needs to be done. So while we, advocate, while we you know, hope and pray, and look forward to a time when the African companies will dominate um, the global economic space. We also have to be realistic to, to the fact that there's a lot that needs to be done. The African market is huge. There's a lot that um, companies in Africa can tap into to grow. But the African companies also need to create products that, are of, that, that have a global demand. So we're here today, we have people in Nigeria buying iPhones, we have people buying all kinds of products that are manufactured in one country but their market is global until we have those global products mm. our markets that we serve cannot give us the kind of wealth and earnings that will put us on this stage where these companies are mark zuckerberg sits in the u.s all of mm. us here are using facebook yes. where is that nigerian product that commands that kind of audience mm. africans as, sorry africans yeah. as a whole we have um, our, our purchasing power is limited mm. so what I can eventually have, whichever terror company I set up in Africa, will be limited to how much Africans even have. Mm. So I need to be able to key into other markets where people have higher purchasing power to buy into my products for me to be able to grow to that kind of level. Thank you. No, but in your estimation, would you say that Nigeria is actually growing? Considering the fact that it has an estimated 200 million people and a situation whereby we have just one person or perhaps two making it to Forbes list for the past more than one decade what does it tell about the country as a whole well i'm not sure it's um i'm not sure it's a reflection of the country because if you, you still just yeah just like you mentioned you mm. mentioned a few names that you see are always there yeah. so can somebody for instance say america is not growing because warren buffett and elon mm. musk mm. and um, mark zuckerberg have remained on that list for mm. decades mm. there are people who have been on that list for only god knows how long carlos slim has been there for maybe the last maybe mm. almost 30 years yeah. and he's in the top 10 he has mm. constantly been in the top 10 Bill Gates has been there for only God knows how long, so I'm not sure we can't really. But Bill Gates at the time it. was, you know, at the fo uh, always mm -hmm. topping. But yeah, you but see but that uh, uh, innovation or uh, IT giants like Elon Musk, Musk yes, they all they came up and overtook him yes. on that so, list. So, but, so, but we are 10. not having the same situation in Nigeria. No, no, like we, we, we are because if you look at it, mm. um, so today Samad Rabi is number two mm. for a very long time. Mike Adeniga was number two. Yes. But you okay. see, Abdul has climbed consistently. Now he's number two. His, his wealth is about 50% of Dangote's. I think he has about 8 billion. Dangote has about 16. Okay. Then you have um, uh, Ote Dola and, and uh, Mike Adeniga will have them having maybe 2 billion, 1 billion. But there was a time when um, Dangote was a baby at about 8 and 
I was somebody that was not even in the top three. Mm. Now he's number two. He's chasing down with the and only God knows what will happen. He has he also has a refinery that's coming on stream mm. in Aquai yes, Bomb. He does, yes. So mm. if you check it, um just as we are saying, Dangote's wealth will likely increase going as a refinery. Yes, as a refinery. Someone also has a refinery, so he too. So the dynamics can change any time, but you have to have people who play at that level, who can access that amount of finance and turn it around and make it profitable. If you have those kind of people, then, so it's not only a vision of the country itself, but the entrepreneurs and the environment. How does it support the growth of yes. that kind of, this exactly. kind of business? Hassan, that is what I was actually coming to that because uh, we talk about ease of doing business. Successive governments have always said, oh, there's a, they put policies in place to ease do, uh, the ease of doing business in Nigeria, but it's not actually yielding much because you have every day the Manufacturers Association of Nigeria crying out over the forest situation and other climatic factors. So, what can be done? Okay, so I, I agree with you totally on that. Mm -hmm. Not just the manufacturers, even people who are in, a, in sectors like ours. Yes. We can tell you, doing business in Nigeria mm -hmm. can be, I don't want to use the word horrific, it can be stressful. Mm -hmm. You wake up every day and something happens that mm -hmm. takes you back one, two, three years. You make a lot of progress today and one policy comes and next thing you know is you are scrambling to just remain mm -hmm. afloat. So there's a lot that government needs to do if it wants to ease um, the climate for businesses. Yes. And particularly, particularly, I think government needs to look at the areas of um, improving access to credit. Oh. That's, that's very, very key. Yes. Right now, because of a lot of um, issues in Nigeria in terms of um, how people are able to secure credit, oh. find a lot of businesses, being the high by interest rate. rates yeah you have high even before you, you have to even get the loan before you talk about they will pay the interest so people don't if people can't even access you, you have to access the money for talking about paying interest i can't even access so there 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 are hurdles that um small businesses must on the most pass through mm. and there are some that can actually be um reconsidered so this if you create those kind of if you of those bottlenecks and make the environment mm. friendlier and you have the SME sector beginning to mm. grow. That's the engine room, to be honest. Not the dangotes, not the some other views. Mm. Those ones who continue to operate at that their level. Yes. But mm. what you need to get Nigeria really, really growing is the small and medium sized enterprises. Yes. And those people struggle under the weight of taxes, under the challenge of access to credit, mm. under the, the issues of infrastructure. Mm. You are struggling with a poor power supply, you are yes. struggling with a bad internet, mm. all the things that can make them you know, become employers of more labor than they're currently employing. Mm. If those things are taken off and you have a company that was employing two, that now employs yes. four, that's already a 100% increase in yeah. their, what, they, what they were employing. Yes. So that's where government needs to focus on. And if more people earn more, more people can buy more. More people buy more, you have a thriving economy. Mm -hmm. No, oh, thank you so much. Now, looking at uh, current global trends, do you think there could be more African companies making it to first rankings in the near future? I asked that before, mm -hmm. but I'm still asking based on your explanation. Based on current trends. Okay. Based on current trends of today, if they don't change, mm. we have a long way to go. Yes. All right, there are other competing rankings like Bloomberg and Fortune, all in the U.S. Maybe someday Nigeria will have its own version of industry and persons persons rankings too. Do you think so? Oh, of course, of course. Um, I think even at our own local level, we have people who do some of this. Even though they're not empirically proven, mm. someone just says, "Oh, this is the best person." Best. But over time, as we have more access to data, and as people see how to generate value out of it, because they are not just doing it just mm. for the fun of it. They found a way to connect it to their business model. Mm. So as people see how they can derive value from creating kind of rankings, of course, I'm sure people will go into it. There has to be a, a, a business case for it, for people to actually um, you know, you venture to into. Yeah. Into that. And the last slide, what is all this for you and I and people on these streets, this Forbes list that comes out every year with estimation of a uh, richest people so what what do we stand to benefit you and i and even the common man on the street to be honest mm. gives us something to talk about <laughs> but but mm. but but on, on a more serious note i mm. think it just helps us to see uh, as an indicator of what's happening in our economy mm. and uh, to help us to also maybe aspire mm. but to be honest um i think i think it's um 
it's, it doesn't really add much to what's on the table, but it gives us an idea, it gives us a, a pulse of how things are faring in the economy, among the business elites, just gives us that that that, that idea. And um, oh, then go take and get there, maybe I can. Yes, maybe okay. it's just, just something that people can aspire for. You may never get there. They may be only one time to our generation. Most times, that's how it is. But talking about uh, what we stand to benefit, you notice that uh, Dangote is a commodity merchant. Just to have the uh, boa and all what else. How come we are not having innovators also making it on the list? Well, Except here in Nigeria, for Adenuga, which is a well, global com. So, um, mm -hmm. telco telco owners, most of them may not really get there. Because it's it's still a function of how many people can purchase the product, the commodity you are selling. Mm. You have a lot more people buying salt mm. than you have people buying airtime. Okay, and you can actually put more value, mm. you know, on that. Um, airtime is is, is is a luxury. Salt mm. for most people is a necessity. Mm. So, but when we begin to have uh, maybe bigger companies that can pay more, mm. um, being supplied with services that um, that our innovators can come up with, mm. then you can have that. Or you have somebody comes up with a, maybe a model of, um, of, of a social media network, something that is accessible to everyone and you have people who can actually purchase value from it. If I set up a social media network and nobody's advertising on it, of course, nobody gets anything out of it. So yeah, it's, it has to just come back to that point of what's the value to the man on the streets mm. yeah, and then how much are people willing to pay if we have innovators and we don't have a market for it it's still a problem all right thank you so much well we ask this where we've come draw the curtain on today's morning radio i've had the pleasure of having with me in the studio the ceo drawbridge communication Hassan, Abdi. Hassan, it's a pleasure to have you. Thank you so much, Winifred. It has been I look my forward pleasure. to seeing more of you on our program, Money Radio. Thank you. Ask, my name is Winifred Ubebo, and of course, I'm calling it a day until I come your way again, same time next week. Have a wonderful day. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.